Try this guy, see if this will work. Okay, that works. There. We, oh, now I. Okay. Okay. Well, it's using the jobber down there instead of this mic up there. So I think something's unplugged, and then we didn't plug it in. Okay. So maybe this will work for now until I figure it out. How about that? All right. Uh, All right. We can works. do that. Can you guys okay. at least hear? Press the sound on button. Thank <laughs> Bob. you, Bob. Bob, oh, that's right. very helpful. I know we got some sound, but uh, yeah. I'll keep. I'll keep. I'll work on it in a second. I just want to. So sound for dummies. Things are okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all, all right. All right. So we got audio on the okay. stream, so all right. All right. We're good. Yeah, so, yeah. There we go. There we go. Yep. We're what good. we've got here. Um, well, what's what do I have plugged in? Welcome to Thursday. Welcome to Thursday. Again. Scotch cocktails and other cocktails. Lots of good information. Wow, sir. Yeah, it's all good. So it's not a Thursday if you not have technical difficulties. That's <laughs> correct. I uh, I whipped up a cocktail for the other dummies, uh, but. Before we get to it, let's talk about the Glenlivet right. well, Caribbean Reserve. Back up and a have a, bit. A, a, a sweet sip and say hi to everybody at a time. Right. Yeah, we can do that. Um, I'll pour a little bit of this. That gives Drew a second to try to figure out our mic issue. Hello. Sound is um, on, but a little quiet. Yeah, yeah that's because we're new sound guy. Yeah, we're working on it. Zach, um, Zach gives us five dollars for a new sound guy. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> anyway, uh, I can't scroll because. Our, our, our driver is, well, you've got some things. Yeah, 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 but anyway, yeah. one last cause, Greg, I see Sunny even Scotch, um, Steve, Alejandro. Uh, most of the folks that, everybody that was in the pre-show, that's for sure. Stuff for Work um, is already talking about a penicillin. We will get into mm. the mixed drink cocktails discussion Indeed. shortly. Um, but what's in your guys' glass? I am drinking, what is this? That's Matt in 18, I think. Yep. Um, had a little warm up, you guys, with the patrons. Yeah, we uh, did. And we're going to talk about a couple of things. Obviously, Sean's got some cocktails, recipes. You shared them already. I, I shared a couple on the patron. Okay, so uh, the patrons have a little bit of an inside yep. scoop on, on what's going on there. So I shared the two that I'm going to make on the show. Uh, I shared those two recipes. But uh, the one that I made for the dummies before the show to talk about the Glenlivet, I, I did not share, but I will share on Discord after the show. Okay. Okay. We got, we got, is the doc around? Dr. Scotch will be around. He's going to talk about kind of the history of, of cocktails from what I hear. Oh, yeah, he likes cocktails too? Mm -hmm. All right. At least he likes talking about them. Yeah, right. We he's, got a, he's a doctor of history tonight. No <laughs> audio. <laughs> no audio. audio. No, no, no. I scrolled up. Yeah, he goes back. Oh. This was to see <laughs> who was on. Yeah, right. Calm that down. makes sense. Glenn <laughs> Fittig, 21 Grand oh. Reserve. 
Nice. So anyway, we've got a couple of things to talk scotch in the news as well, so we'll see where that goes. We're going to test something real quick. Hold Testing on. Testing the road mic one more time. Hello. There we there go. There we go. There we go. How was it? I just unplugged it plug it back in. Now we are cooking with gas. Hopefully. See, sometimes you just got to reboot shit. Yeah. All right. So hopefully the audio is back up to normal, guys. Let's and you hear us. Yeah. Wowzer. Um, so anyway, that's what we got going on on the show. I don't know what else we're going to pepper in there. I think the cocktails are going to take a little bit of time. I yep. think they're going to be so fun. Yeah. But um, we do want to start off with this Glenlivet. I didn't look at so many of the comments from this bottle this week. Uh, we've been getting a lot of comments on old reviews, to be honest yeah. with you. It's, which is kind of fun, but it's also, it kind of gets under your skin sometimes because people will say something like, man, that thing was three years ago. It's <laughs> Isla, not LA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. you're right, you're right. Um, I'm going to tell you what I would have told you three years ago. Calm down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, um, so what do we have to say about this Glenlivet? I need to pour a little bit of it. Um, I th what, what did we, did you guys talk about scores? I was, wasn't nope. paying attention. No, okay. we were so, waiting on you. Okay, so I think you're the only one that I think really kind of I, liked it. I I thought it was a interesting scotch for the flavor profiles that I got out of it. Was it an exceptional scotch? No. But for the money you were going to pay for it, and if you liked rum, if you don't care for rum, if you don't like fruity tropical flavors, this isn't going to be your yeah, wheelhouse. And that was my problem with it. Um, I mean, you know, it just is what it is. But I kind of went into it with the assumption that it was going to have mm -hmm. tropical fruits and bananas and be kind of, you know, sweet because of the rum finish. And, you know, I got all those things, and I think that's what they were trying to go for, and it was a reasonably priced bottle. So, yep. uh, but if you don't care for that kind of stuff, and I know, Mark, you especially were talking about, you know, that it didn't taste like a scotch to you. Right. And so, I mean, I, I can understand that as well. But uh, if you know that going in, that it's going to taste a little rummy and you like rum, then I, I think that that appeals to a certain segment. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Tom did tell us, he just he just posted that he has a new saying because he really likes this bottle. Um, uh, you're, if you're not Sean, you are wrong. <laughs> so to quote Trooper Henry's comment on the video, truth hurts. Mark, I think I'd give it the same rating. Yeah. So yeah, whatever. You're such a <laughs> you're such a trooper, Mark. I mean, <laughs> it's a Scotch trooper. I, uh, here, here's I, I think that it's it probably got about the score that it it needed to. I, I mean, it, I think it's going to appeal to a smaller segment of the population. But uh, you know, you're going to see I think more scotches finished in interesting caskings. Well, now that's I mean, opening up. Yeah. To be honest, uh, you know, we've got that that mezcal finished bottle that we're going to review pretty soon and. I'm not looking forward to that. I think it'll be horrible. <laughs> uh, I don't I think it's a bad, bad idea. <laughs> but, but you know what? But that's that, what they have there to are do. people that are out there that are that right. enjoy tequilas yeah. and mezcals, and you know, if you get a good tequila or mezcal, it's a whole different story. It is. Totally. I don't think that this is going to be that. <laughs> but um, you know, so I think that you're going to start seeing more scotches finished in, in interesting ways. And so, trying to be open-minded about it, is it going to fit everybody's bill? No. So one thing we didn't do is that now that we've got audio, should we kind of start over and let's work real quickly with the podcast so we can kind of get that going, flowing? Yeah, we probably. Should. If you want to start the podcast, and, sure. Yeah, we'll and, start we, the podcast. and we just do a real quick highlight of this again. Yeah, yeah. Talked about it. So, which, by the way, we're going to start the podcast. So you guys know, um, if you're not listening to the podcast, we're starting to interject some extra material. It's not just the recording of this show, but doing some yep. um, telephone interviews with folks, and so it's it's going to get a little bit fun. All right, in three, two, what's up, everybody? Hey, guys, Scotch for Dummies. Four guys on the Scotch journey to help you with your next Scotch purchase. I'm Drew. I'm Sean. I'm Andrew. And I'm Mark. <laughs> and we're, Wait a minute. We're we all messed up. Here a little so, bit. We're, we're all Why out of sorts we tonight. Uh, I, because I'm doing cocktails tonight, so I'm standing back here with all the equipment. Uh, I guess. Uh, so we're, we're kind of a mess, and we're all out of sorts, but we're going to get there, I promise. I'm looking forward to this. You, you poured <laughs> one ahead of time, so we're going to talk about that in a second. But, yes. Uh, we're going to talk about some cocktails tonight, and we, we kind of briefly talked a little bit on the pre-show uh, with the Glen Levitt Rum Cast, so we're going to talk about that. Yep. Just going to kind of a, a, a highlight again, kind of talking about through what we talked about in the show and our, our numbers, etc. It's a rummy cask. It's, it's a, a rummy, rummy cask. Scotch. So we had, what, two two one fives, a one, and then I gave it a two five. That sounds about right. Is that right? And it was a two rating, basically. Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. I think that kind of came out right. I think right. you and I sure. are both one five. Andrew gave it a... Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I... I Again, it's it's nothing spectacular. It's not off, but it's just not. 
What was the price again? It was up there, right? That was the problem. I think it was, it was seventy something dollars. That's something. the reason. One of the reasons why I gave it a lower score. No, too, I, think. Mm. I thought it was like forty. <laughs> it was like forty-five. Yeah, yeah it's not then, seventy. Okay, that's what but, you know. One of the things that that Sean mentioned is you know it, you're going to see more of these types of things because you know they opened it up a little bit. There's a mezcal one we're going to do. And I'm not knocking that. I mean, experimentation is where you come up with great things, right? It they is. didn't just create single malt scotches in a, in a day and be like, oh, this is the best one ever. Yeah. So I'm all about trying it sure. and pushing the envelope a little bit. But I don't want them to push it to the point where it's not recognizable as scotch to me. That was my problem. That's and I'm not saying I don't like rums. I mean, heck, heck yeah, I've had my damn cheap rums and had a couple of good ones too. The top yeah, of for sure. Two that you're yeah. like, wow, it's a different That's thing. A different I had no thing. idea rums could be that good, sure. honestly. Sure, but again, I, this one, I'm not, not I, like you said, it's not off-putting. It's not like I won't finish the bottle. Well, I, mean, I, I, I want to bring up a point just because, I, and I hadn't really thought about this when we did the review, but I was talking to Tom about it um, after he watched the review, and he said something that kind of stuck with me, which was, you know, Mark talked about how it was unrecognizable as a scotch because it tasted more like rum, and he pointed out that, you know, a lot of people don't have a problem if it's super duper sherry and it's covering up all the flavors of the scotch or, you know Ooh. what I mean? And so I was like, well, you know what? That That is a good point. You know, I mean, it's Tom a... Tom cracking the whip. Well, I... So, I, so no, no, I, I, you know, back and forth, you know, quick, quick, quick. But, mm-hmm. sure. But it doesn't, it doesn't ruin, it doesn't cover the, 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 the flavor profile of the scotch. I don't drink, I don't want wine. I'm still getting, so as sherry finished, I still taste... The, the the malty character or the you know what I mean not all of them <laughs> yeah I, I'm just there's saying there, there are definitely you know I mean you talk about sherry bombs a lot and there's sure. a lot of people who do and you know the more sherry the better is kind of the whole story you know the darker the richer the fuller bodied yep. and so I mean in in that circumstance you're talking about covering up the flavor of the scotch with a substantial amount of sherry or letting it marry together I think that the problem with this one is that it's a young scotch. It didn't really have time to. It's flavored with the with the rum. It's not married with the rum. Correct. Yeah. Does that, that's a, that's does that make point. sense? I agree with that statement. Sure, that makes sense. So because we've had some some rum cask finished like sure. older expressions that that Do were well. actually really well, well, really yeah. good. So I think part of this bottle's problem is that it is a young scotch. It's going to have some like disjointed character about it. So I I think that it's. Yep. It, that, that's about as good a score as it was going to get. No, I was going to say, <laughs> at the end of the day, an average score from all of us, a two, that's fine. I think it's, I think it's right in line where it should be. And it's, uh, it's and, still got... And Tom said it's like 20, 20 plus dollars at Benny's. So, I mean... What? For the price. That's what he said. 27, I think. Wow. Said. But right. let's just call it 35, 40 bucks. So, but what... It's not that bad for that, I guess. So, with that bottle, what can you make, John? Oh, so... I, it, it's cocktail night because I mentioned it on the video that we should make a cocktail. Somebody mentioned it. I don't even know if it was me, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but somebody mm-hmm. mentioned that we should make cocktails out of this because it wasn't everybody's favorite scotch. But it did have some interesting flavors and it would probably go good. And so I started sure. thinking about cocktails that I wanted to make. So we're going to get into some just like plain old scotch cocktails later. But yeah. for this particular one, um, I, had a, I always have a couple criteria and I posted this on our patron page that I, I like to use ingredients that you can actually find because one of my pet peeves is, you know, you're scrolling through the internet looking at, you know, recipes for cool drinks and you're like, that one looks really awesome, man. It sounds really good. And you pull up the recipe and it's got 12 ingredients and nine of them, I don't know what they are. Yeah. And I, I need the <laughs> stamen from an elder flower grown in Brazil. Yes. You know? and, and so I'm like, well, I, I don't want it to be so complicated that nobody knows how to, you know, where to find the ingredients or how to make this stuff. So I wanted to make something that was fairly easy, and I wanted to focus on fall drinks. Yep. So I was looking for that. So I made the hot buttered rum cask. So <laughs> I, I basically made hot buttered rum, but instead of the rum, I used this limited Caribbean Reserve. And it turned out pretty good. Uh, now, yep. it, it's definitely not a watching your weight kind of drink, because the first ingredient is a stick of butter um, for the four of us. <laughs> yeah, but you get four <laughs> drinks out of it. So you it's get four quarter, drinks. It's out only a quarter of a stick. It's to only glass. two tablespoons of butter per. T- per but it will keep you hydrated because it also has two two cups of water. Yeah, oh, see, that's nice. Don't be upset. So you know, I'm, I'm trying to help you guys out, but it, it is a nice fall drink. If you guys have never done hot buttered rum, it's it's really really simple. Oh man, it's like perfect for pan- eating pancakes or you know sitting out. Like well, Mark said earlier on the Zoom call, 
Yeah, to me, this reminds me of something I would, I mean, honestly, we should have a big, huge pot warming, and we're throwing bags on a Saturday morning with the autumn leaves falling, tailgating for some college football that we're getting ready to go into the stadium in about two hours after we yep. get good and liquored up. It, it's, it's, got, it's got those good fall flavors. Yeah. It's got all that, like, baking spices and brown right. sugar, and it's just, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a really comforting drink, so... Um, so there's the hot buttered rum cask. So you guys are the hot buttered rum cask. You guys are a fan? Yeah, it's good. I, I love it's, it. It's good. It's really tasty. But like you said, college football. This is a perfect drink for that. P apologies for the audio. I didn't mute my iPhone when I was doing the camera. I didn't realize that it. it's back. It should be back now. <laughs> was I, I got so many things I'm trying to do. Oh, are we getting, so we have, getting some feedback going on there? Well, no. I was, it was using this mic instead of that mic for a second. So no. let's point that out real quick. All Drew right. found a new new toy and some software, and he's been able to now pull in live feed video from his phone like he was just doing and, and, and zoom in on some things, which really gives you guys some cool views because you can actually, you know, move it around. Right. It, it's it's an interesting but, thing. But it, it takes a minute for him to get used to the new. Well, yeah, I, I didn't realize I had the muted over here on the uh, iPhone because it took over when I put that camera on. Interesting. Okay. So now that's, we know. That's crazy. All, All right. right. Well, Sorry about that, guys. Right. Well, Sorry about that, podcasters. What's next, Sean? What, what's so, the next good scotch cocktail? So I, I had a couple that, um, and like I said, I was focusing on fall cocktails because we're coming into fall, at least if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. How about that? Yeah, um, yeah Brad's not. It's, it's not for everybody. <laughs> Brad's but, looking uh, for spring lacrosse or something. All right. So I posted on, uh, for the patrons, the, the two drinks that I'm going to make tonight. Uh, so one is the Scotch Sour, which I've got to go upstairs and grab a couple of eggs because I totally spaced that. A what? couple of eggs? Yeah, yeah. Them. Okay. Um, so I'll have to go grab a couple of eggs for that real quick. Uh, so talk amongst yourselves while I'm A couple of eggs. All right. Uh, I don't know. Don't be scared, man. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. We got all kinds of crazy stuff going on. I got yeah, the, I got the ingredients up now, finally. Well, let's read these ingredients. Yeah, the one half sour. ounce freshly squeezed lime juice. Yum. One half ounce freshly squeezed lemon juice. One ounce simple syrup. So far, so good. I'm yeah. on board. Two ounces blended scotch. All right. One egg white. Yeah. I'm actually really intrigued about this one because I was telling oh, the boys I, I had a drink up in Chicago uh, last fall. I'm up there and I was having some scotch. Actually, I was having some old fashions. Yeah. And this guy was, he was really interested in our scotch channel. He said, Hey, can I make you a, a scotch uh, drink that I've been working on? He uses egg whites. I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. Sure, why not? So I don't know what he did. Sean, Sean's basically telling me he did it wrong, which I can't believe. <laughs> well, yeah, because um, I tasted bad. When I had it, it was not. It was like drinking basically egg whites. Uh, yeah. Good. I'm so, Molly. So Hi. Let, let's talk about cocktails for a minute. I mean, there there's a right way to make cocktails. Some cocktails, it's pretty easy. Just mixing a couple of ingredients together. Maybe you're stirring it or shaking it briefly, and there's not much to it. Yep. Some cocktails are a little more technical, um, and I this wouldn't say that they take a little bit of skill, but they take a little more work. You yeah. actually have to pay attention a little bit, all right? So egg cocktails, like people get freaked out by this because number one, it's a raw egg, all right? I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm getting freaked out, dude. I'm not gonna cook. Oh. <laughs> hey, hold on him for a second. I can make sure the audio is good. I'm not gonna cook this egg. We're, we're gonna shake it up, and that's kind of it. So when you talk about egg cocktails, you, when they, when they put the disclaimer on a menu that says, hey, you know, wrong, undercook, yeah. you know, whatever, you should cook this stuff, like, yeah, you should, but you should cook cookie dough too, but everybody has a spoonful, yeah, right? Yeah, whatever, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> the egg, Talk to us. Uh, you have to shake this for a, a little bit of time. Um, the whole point of it is that you are frothing the egg. You're basically kind of making a meringue. Not really, because you're not adding that much sugar, egg, but, but you're, you're yeah. whipping it, right? Yeah. And so it gets frothy and fluffy, but it doesn't do that if there's ice in there. So there's two different ways to do it. You can dry shake it, which was what I'm going to do, or you can reverse dry shake it, where you... What? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to put all the ingredients in here, the egg white and all of the juices and liquors and everything, without ice, and I'm going to shake it for a while. That's the dry shaking part. That gets the egg to froth. And then I'm going to put ice in it and just shake it briefly just to kind of cool it down a little bit. Yeah. And then we'll pour it into the glass. And what you end up with, ideally, is a, <laughs> a layer of foam on top of the drink. And it's light and it's fluffy. 
the egg gives a little bit more full bodied uh, quality yep. to the drink. And the drink that I'm making, I'm making a scotch sour. And so the egg white kind of takes the edge off of those acidic, um, that tanginess a little bit. And okay. so it kind of rounds out the beverage, okay. right? All right? So that's what's going on. So you guys talk for a second. Let's I'm going to zoom into this bad boy. Gonna... There we go. The chef is making the drink, the bartender. All right. So, so, so now you're taking the uh, egg white out. Yep. Hopefully not getting the... Uh... So this is bartender scotch, not Dr. Scotch. Yeah, well... There we go. All right, there's one. All right, so we and I'm just gonna make a cocktail, and we can kind of we're gonna see what this looks bit. like. Yeah, so half ounce. Huh? So we are, he's adding a half ounce of fresh squeezed lime juice, which is what two essentially half mm -hmm. a half a two lime. wedges, half yeah, a lime. couple wedges of you know. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to describe on the podcast. Half ounce of <laughs> not much good, half actually. ounce of lemon juice. So, you got so again, a couple Another wedges of comments. lemon. Tomorrow you go Rocky. Yeah, that's right. All right. So yeah. I am done with the Glen Levitt. So a couple, time, couple that's okay. Hey D. Couple wedges, so but essentially a half a lime give or take. Yep. Um, and so I made some just plain old simple syrup. So we need a couple ounces of that. Um, if you guys don't have jiggers at home, I highly recommend them. You need them, yeah. Um, I've got a couple of different kinds here. Um, so this is kind of a standard issue. One, this thing. is a one ounce, two ounce. Jigger. It's one ounce on the yep, small, on the and then this one is a one ounce, one ounce and a half. Yeah, that's what um, I've got, which I don't really like. Some of them are you can get um, like three quarters of an ounce, ounce and a half. Like it comes yeah. in some some odd sizes. Um, I generally use this one ounce, two ounce one. Uh, that's so one ounce. Simple syrup. Is Mark Rainer on? I'll scroll up a little bit. Let me see. Yeah. How much did you put in? So one, one ounce of simple one syrup. Ounce of syrup. And we're going to put in two ounces of scotch. Blend it through. Who you, what what do you scotch use? do you want to use? So, what scotch do you guys want to use? We can use really anything on the bar. It doesn't have to be a blended scotch. I haven't picked anything out. So, Andrew, so, take your pick. I don't know if we have monkey shoulder. Do you want to do a little peated in there? We or? drank all the monkey shoulder. All right. So, as far as we, uh, I, don't, I don't think we want to use Cutty Sour. But there's a Doer's 15 or some of those down down on the bottom. Yeah, that Doer's 15. I'm, I'm, that's, that's a sherry, though, isn't it? Oh, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're, you're right. right. Yeah. Why don't you How about that Spayburn? How about that Spayburn 10? That Spayburn 10 be good. Where is it at? Uh, uh, for, for top oh. shelf. There you go. There we go. So it's, not yeah, a yeah. it's not a blended scotch, but it's it's a light. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a, light enough yeah. to where it's not going to really impart some crazy flavor. Yeah. And it's not such a high ABV that it's going to cook the egg. Yeah. <laughs> so how much are you putting in a two ounce in? Two ounces. Yep. All right. All right. So all the ingredients are in my shaker. And there's no ice in here. Okay. So that's what you shake. call it, dry shake. So, you're just going to shake it for a while. 20 seconds. Maybe. So, this, this is where, shake, you know, shake, shake. in the, uh, the, cra shake, shake, the craft shake. cocktail bars, they, it takes you t five to ten minutes to get a drink, each individual drink, because it takes this extra time to fresh it's, squeeze it's the juice. It's some work, too. And, uh, I mean, it's not, it's kind of a pain, really. Yeah. Like, you're paying for somebody to sh shake this drink for... <laughs> right. So I went to a, a sort of a speakeasy type bar in Kansas City when I was out yeah. there for work. And I mean, you had to get, get, you had to send a text message to a number and they gave you a passcode that you and you have to go to the door when it's your yeah. time. And it, it was all specialty cocktails, but they made it with really good scotch, you know. I mean, it was, oh, yeah. it was really interesting. It took, like you said, 10 minutes to get a drink. But they, they limited the number of people that were in a really right. cool atmosphere. It was a very, very interesting. I got it up here. Hold on. Give a little bit of ice in there. Uh oh, looking kind no. of frothy, guys. This much. is coming together. Uh, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, you can put that on. All right, now we chilled it down with a little ice in there, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, you can tell Drew is like, this is not gonna be good. Are you not excited about it? Say what a comment. Sorry, co sorry, podcasters. <laughs> Uh, Drew, oh, is, yeah. Drew is doubting the. Uh, oh my God! I can't. My mouse. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. There we go. I was trying to see who I was on. I thought uh, there was someone who made a comment to Mark Rayner, and I was like, "Is he on?" I was hoping that there was right. okay down there. Look so, at that. Well, there you go. Let me get a close up of this guy here. There you go. So that looks pretty fancy. And the cool part is. 
So that is a dry shaken cocktail. You can do a reverse dry shake where you put ice in, shake it for a while, then you dump it into another mixer and dry shake it, and then you put ice back in it and shake it and then serve it. Okay. And amazing. So it's it, keeping it, its froth. That's cool. Yeah. It, is it going to separate a little bit? Yeah, it'll, it'll separate just a little bit. Um, that's I, a good froth. There, that's good. So you can decorate the froth. You can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, you, if you, I don't know if you could make it in a blender. You could try it. I don't know if it would come with the same effect or not, but it's not going to hurt anything to, to give it a shot. Um, that's some good stuff right there. So the egg white cocktails. Yeah. The only that, the only fire. downside yeah, with them good. that is fire is if you don't if you don't drink them quickly enough if they start to warm up a little bit you'll start to smell the egg a little bit so you can you can hit the rim with um, <laughs> get the some uh, some lime or lemon rind just to kind of that'll take a little bit out of describe away. that Andrew what we got here for the podcast so yeah. it, it's a, it's essentially a whiskey sour but it's um, the texture because of that, I mean, it, it, it's like a, it's like almost like a marshmallow froth yes. meringue or something. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, it's a more marshmallow froth because it's really fine bubbles. It is separate. It's really um, mm -hmm. smooth on the tongue. It's not overly sour. Um, I think the the syrup and then the, the fresh juice really, that's good stuff. It's actually really good, guys. You should try this one at home. It's, it's actually and pleasantly, nice. pleasantly surprised. I, I will tell you if you've only if the only whiskey sour that you have ever had is like whiskey and sour mix at a bar and they're shooting sour mix out of a gun that's not this i mean right. this is like almost is like a hurricane because of the fresh juice in it it's yeah. not as sweet as a hurricane clearly but that's really that's cool <laughs> oh i've never seen that happen before so so that's an egg white cocktail um so don't be afraid to to use them i mean oh, you I don't use them in everything but you can decorate the top if you go to you know a, a nice really cocktail bar a lot of times they'll um have a stencil where they'll tap spices onto the top so they'll, they'll put their logo or something on there mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of a cool deal but um i, I think it's fun Malt oh, Monday said it's very important to make egg white cocktails with lime or lemon juice yeah you've got to have some some it's citrus sitting. in there yeah man that was good if you don't the acid won't cook the egg interesting oh huh. i don't know that it it actually cooks it it probably doesn't have time for the acid to cook the egg all the yeah, way it's, but it's only a few minutes. Th there exactly. is a chemical Something's going on to help make it froth. Man, like you that. can drink that fast if you wanted to. Right. It's so they're, really it's good, right? I mean, yeah. it's it's not oh, what yeah, you think it would be. Um, and I, to me, that's an all year cocktail. I mean, it's you could drink it in the summer. You that's could drink nice. it in the winter. It's 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 nice. The only thing is, you got to commit. You got to shake. You got to right? shake. Yeah. You right. got to shake for a while. Um, that that's the downside with that cocktail. So that's delicious. Thank you for making that one. So, so all right. Excellent. So the, so the recipe we'll put it on. Um, uh, our maybe a website or Google, you think, something like that. We'll get so just yeah. podcasters yeah, can link to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. On the website, you want to go there for? Any one oh of, yeah, I can rinse. Want to be my my rinse aid? <laughs> I'll be your dishwasher. So uh, did you? Is this something? Oh, we got a super chat coming in, guys. Sweet. Who we got? For <laughs> for whatever Tom R wants. I guess Tom R can't super chat, so uh, Zach's <laughs> super chatting for him. That's Why nice. can't he? I don't, I don't know, <laughs> but he can. So thank you. Tom? Thank, you. Thank you, Zach Andrews and Tom R for. So, so I have to ask now that we've had this this egg cocktail. Did that did was, he make it? He made it wrong. Because <laughs> that was that nothing not, like that's that. Not how it's supposed to no, go. I I tasted raw egg. I was like, that's awful. No, so I don't, maybe he didn't do the dry shake. I don't know, but it was it was not good. Yeah, I mean, if he just put the egg in with ice and just shook it up a little bit, it would be. Raw egg. I yeah, know, it would be taste. not great. Yeah, I can, I can imagine that. <laughs> well, you definitely don't get that on this drink. It's actually got a really uh, good mouthfeel with that froth in it. Oh, I like so it. good. Yeah. yeah, it's tasty. I um, like it a lot. Okay. All right. So that was, and when did you have this recipe? <laughs> Is this a, so I, I kind of borrowed and appropriated a little bit of stuff. Um, and, you know, I when I look at recipes, yeah. I'm like, I like part of that. Sure. And then I just throw in what I want. Yeah, I figured <laughs> as much. Mean, but the, the, the scotch sour, this is a pretty standard issue. I mean... Oh, so I'm Drew's so got plenty of Dean's and Twenty. Uh, we'll pick up some Mountain Dew for Sunday evening scotches. Dean's and Twenty. Mile. I oh my have gosh. a new shirt 
I am making called Mountain Drew. I, I, I like that one a lot. The uh, Deanston bottle on it. You just created the monster, Sunday. That's great. I love that. So, lot. yes, everyone, the Spayburn works fine in it. Um, it, it was good. Yeah, I, it was really good, actually. I mean, you could, because it's got a, a pretty strong acidic flavor, you could you could do a more powerful scotch in there if you wanted to. Yeah, honestly, I, I you could put in a, a fuller body, more peated, malty you know, scotch. A peated one. I, you, you probably could put in a peated, and it would end up starting to get into that, like, penicillin range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give it the sweet. smoky with the acidic, True. and you know, it'd actually probably be pretty good. Yeah, all right. So, moving on, um, I did a, a fall one. Oh, I gotta go grab apple juice. I forgot to grab that too. Oh man, man I'm falling down here. Talk about right, I, gotta take, I gotta take the ingredients <laughs> up the other one real quick. Okay, and so new one what's this there, new so. one called? Uh, fall, fall, e fall evening. No, fall, fall evening. There's the Good ingredients. Evening. Evening. There you go. So We've got one and a half ounces of Highland Scotch, one ounce apple juice, one half ounce cinnamon syrup, one quarter ounce fresh lemon juice, one dash the Bitter Truth aromatic bitters. No, so you need one dash of bitters. Yep. And then garnish with applesauce. Interesting. It is interesting. I, I want to see how you get you get Apple slice. Oh, apple slice, not right apple <laughs> sauce. I'm like, well, you did say sauce. Take, was was like, going to take a spoonful of sauce and just throw it on top? I want to see how he's going to do that. That's a little weird. <laughs> yeah, so garnish with apple slice. Um, okay. I like that, that we're doing sense. some fall drinks here, too. It's kind of, it's, you know what's funny is, is the September is like next week, right? Literally, is, next week. Like where did this, 40 away. 2020, man, let me tell you. Oh, 2020. Uh, I mean, why not? Why, why shouldn't there be a hurricane that just blasted the crap out of the golf course? Right? Two in a row. Boom, boom. Back and and I don't know. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen um, any of our friends down there online right now. Have you? Mm, I haven't heard from Lee. I heard I, she's fine on Facebook. Yeah, I, I saw her on Facebook. She's uh, fine. I know Zach's that, on from Dallas. Yeah, but it missed Dallas. Totally, yeah. Okay. Is was Mark JG living like uh, Louisiana? Somebody does. I, I thought he had to. Uh, we're gonna have to improvise another cocktail because somebody drank all my apple juice. Uh -oh. What? The teenagers drink the apple teenagers. juice. Dun dun dun. Yeah. That's a bummer. This one was going to be good, too. Well, do we have an apple or we just need to mash and get some juice out of it? Because we only need, what, an ounce? Oh, my God. That sounds like a... That sounds awful. Get a blender? I do. <laughs> sounds like an awful. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, we don't have time for that. So let's go, let's go with do Rob Roy. If you've got some applesauce. Yeah, we'll just do simple or Rob Roy. Apple juice. Right. A peated Rob Roy, man, because those are fantastic. I, I feel like Dr. Scott should do that one. Ooh. I like it. Well, Dr. Scott, call that dude up. Basis. We call have, we have to call him if we get a hold of him. What did he say? Dr. Dr. Scotch. <laughs> Let's see if he's around. Oh, we got a super chat from DC. Oh. Just a triple dog dare. Go right for <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Skip the other one. Cheers Go to straight, that. Straight to the triple dog dare. Well, this is going to be helpful. There you go. Oh. So All right. Very nice. Yeah, there you go. He's actually in Houston. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Um, so we got to get going. We're off the rails here, guys. All right, let's All right, go. So, so next, what are we, we going to switch up and have yeah. Dr. Scotch? Yep. Dr. Scotch let's is going to come in and do a Rob Roy. His, well, well, we can start out with that. Old-fashioned. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Let's do it. Hey, guys. Hey, Dr. Scott here. Woohoo! Woo so, what are you doing? So we got a couple things to talk through, and maybe we can talk while I mix, but that may be dangerous. Um, so, <laughs> I got this, Doc. So there's a couple recipes here that, that Dr. Scott likes, especially like um, old fashioned with peated whiskeys. But um, you know, he, and he's adding club soda days. That's interesting. Um, club soda. It's optional. Huh? It's optional. I'd use a little water with mine, but that's okay. Um, so what, what would you prefer? Do you prefer Rob Roy or an old fashioned? Oh, I, I've had too much sweet. Let's do Rob Roy. All right, Rob Roy. Well, that's that sweet for most of it. So. Well, it's all right. Take that out of mine. <laughs> take all right, it so, out we're, of mine. so the, the beauty of. Oh, oh, the, of uh, oh good lord. All right, KB. So Doc. the beauty of the Dr. Scotch um, Rob Roy is that you use peated whiskey, of course. So um, I'm, I think one of the good things to do, 
I like a Lefroy in that, but in our Big Ten, since you don't have Lefroy here, our Big Ten is a good one for that as well. Real quickly, you thank go. you, KB, to Dr. Scotch. I appreciate it. Thank you for the uh, super check there. Uh, show it. Show it. I can't show that. I don't have it. It's not the same program. Come on, guys. All right. So Somebody show that comment. So you've got a two-ounce pour and an inch-ounce and a half here. All yep. right. Oh, Let's see what you got, man. Where's Michael's your treat, where's your treat uh, it's down underneath. <laughs> I'll get you quick. All right. So we'll start with an ounce uh, and a half of, of, of a peated whiskey, peated scotch, preferably. I guess we could use a balcone as peated. peated so our big 10? Our big 10 for this one. 10 it is. I'm fine with that. All right. So we've got, we have ice already in the shaker. We're going to add a dash of bitters, which are over here. Uh, I like Ben or like Pishog. What, what's your favorite bitters for old fashioned? I I well it depends on what I'm what kind of booze I'm making them with. Those orange bitters are nice. Yeah, so. let's go with the orange bitters. So a dash of two orange bitters. I like a lot of bitters of mine personally, but we'll we'll do a couple you know a couple dashes. A couple dashes of the bitters. Can't bitters. go wrong. A little bit of sweet vermouth. So we're, this one this recipe calls for three quarters of an ounce. Um, I tend to like a little low, so I'm gonna go. This is a one ounce, so I'm gonna go half to three quarters of an ounce of. Oops, sweet vermouth. That was three quarters. <laughs> and then you shake the crap out of it, get it nice and cold. Not like egg whites, but almost. No, because you want to, right, it's already Ooh, in here. I can smell it. You want to ice in the glass to pour it into. Because you want to, you want to strain all that out. Shake, 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 shake. We're going to shake, 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 shake. Throw, throw a few rocks in the glass. Shake that booty. Tom R. Bob H., mm. I'm totally a lightweight. Oh, you can smell that. Mm, love it. And that is by far my favorite shaker. Yeah, it's actually sealed. I'm yeah. trying to keep it below the mic so it doesn't... And you got to shake it enough so like the outside of the shaker gets really cold. Well, that's the best way to do and it. And you're also, like if you're shaking it hard, you want to shake it hard enough that it starts to chip the ice yes. a little bit, and you end up with little ice chips yep. in there. Yep. Undercover yep. Judger, I got to read some of your comments before they were held by YouTube or whatever. Yeah, I like the scenario game. Your scenario is hilarious. Oh, so Dr. Scotch doesn't use the Hawthorne strainer. Nope, I just use the, the lid. Look at that guy. Isn't he sassy? God, it smells smell. so good. Peated Rob Roy. This Yeah, is and the then I, I like some of those fancy, fancy uh, cherries. And then we don't have fancy cherries today, but we'll do that. Nope. So... Take you guys. All right. Yeah. So while we while we pass around, let's talk a little bit about the Let me history of, of, this real quick. of cocktails. History of cocktails. I've got lots of good notes here because I had a great time researching this. You know, normally um, you think of me. You know, Doctor Scotch is not a real doctor, but plays it on YouTube. And so today we're talking about doctors of history. So as uh, his history doctor. Yeah, I think so. Why not? Um, so, the word cocktail. <laughs> Where does that come from? Uh, are you being serious or can I? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so there, there are multiple origin stories to it. There's some in Mexico that, that somebody actually put like the tail of a rooster in a drink and that's what got it. My favorite story is the story where um, if in the uh, late 1700s, early 1800s, late 1700s, um, when you wanted to sell a horse and you kind of had a horse that was eh, not, not kind of past its prime, but you wanted to sell it for good money, so you want to make it look like a, an active horse. So what they did, um, a young active horse tends to, the tail tends to be up, they have big eyes, they, they're, they're kind of prancing around. So what they would do is you take a piece of ginger, peel it, and stick it up their butt. Up their bum? Up their bum. And what that does is the tail cocks up, the eyes open wide, and the horse prances around when you're trying to sell it. So, so, it up the yeah. so what it does is it it create it brightens and um, enhances the personality of a horse, and so it's called a cocktail because it's got the tail is cocked up because it's kind of been enhanced. Well, that's what you do with drinks, is you add ingredients to enhance whatever's in there. So ironically, and so that's kind of the that's an origin story that I like. You said origin story. At first, I heard orgy story, and now no. you're telling me about shoving ginger up a horse's bum. Uh, so this is getting off the road. I, uh, yeah, I don't know how I. Uh, I, I mean, I, it's a weird story. I'm not gonna say that that's not right, but uh, I, I will say that you know cocktails in general, you know, 
when you're adding the ingredients to it, it should enhance the liquor. Exactly. It, it's not there to hide it. It, it should complement and, and pair with whatever so, you're doing. I think that Ardbeg 10 is a little strong for it. I do too. I was actually going to say I kind of like it because it's you get the sweet vermouth up front. It kind of holds everything, and then the smoke is like, woof. Yeah, it kind of comes I'm not over the top. The sweet I, 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 the Ardbeg Tang is, is is powerful. Is it too much? I think. Maybe maybe I should have had a, maybe a little bit more vermouth because someone's not sweet enough for me. Why is everybody so. picking on you, man? But well, and then, admittedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes, you, see, that's why old fashioned, you tend to add sugar directly. All right, drunk so it, it adds a little, Mario said to check the sound again. So let's go on with the story of, of cocktails. So the first time that um, cocktails were ever really documented was about 1809, when you see it in a newspaper, or yeah, 1806, I'm sorry, where it was a, it was a combination of, of um, spirits, sugar, water, and bitters. That was kind of the first documented cocktail. Um, and at the time, that was called a bitter sling. So the, there were cocktails before that, there were, or there were mixed drinks before that. Um, England was well known for making punches in the late 1700s. Yeah, the where they take spirit mold and, wines yeah, and stuff like, like that. that. And in fact, they, they talked about George Washington was known to have um, British either uh, diplomats or stuff to his house for wine and bitters, which probably had Sounds something. Awful. To, it does sound awful. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> would, would would they traditionally back then would they mix drinks to cover up the, the poor taste of the the poor quality of the no, liquor? Not or? at that time, no. So, but that that becomes very important later, because um, they, so one of the drinks you talked about was the old fashioned. Uh -huh. So around 1860, the drinks, the cocktails that were available started having lots of liqueurs in them. They were really sweet, <laughs> and they were um, just kind of mi mixer drinks, and they didn't. Um, you know, the, the, it was not like what was originally de de described in 1806. So at that point, people said, you know what, I want, a, I want an old-fashioned cocktail, which was actually the bitter sling with sugar, syrup, water, and bitters. And so in 1860, they wanted the old-fashioned drink, which was a bitter sling, which that's where the name old-fashioned came from. I see. In that time. So it's, and then that, that's carried forward through all of right. it. Right. Um, so... Cocktails were big, and there, there's a lot of discussion whether the British or the Americans kind of really brought the cocktail culture in the late 1800s to life. But one thing that really, that, a couple things that, that really brought it forward. Number one, in America, they used ice. So imagine this drink with no ice. It's mm. a very different drink. And yeah. so, so what, and when Americans were really into their ice and were able to get, you know, like a, a refrigeration and things, and they would... They would transport ice, um, and globally, that's when drinks really kind of changed a little bit, and that was more prevalent in the U.S. Even though lots of these drinks and creativities came through in in England as well. <laughs> but the thing that's most fun is prohibition. So 1920, 1930, no alcohol, legal alcohol allowed in the U.S. And um, so what you ended up with was bad liquor. Um, you had very lots of, in fact. At one point, a third of the industrial alcohol that was used for manufacturing and all those kind of things was converted to drinks. They actually redistilled it and put it into um, to get all the denaturant out. Mm -hmm. And so you had really bad young whiskey or young um, liquor. So what, at that point, a lot of the cocktails that used whiskey converted to gin. And that's when gin cocktails were, became more popular I because see. gin was not aged and it was easy to make. But when, you, when sure. you're using new spirit to add to make a gin. You just put um, juniper oil in it. You, you took neutral spirit, put juniper oil in it. And gin. And you have gin. Voila. And now, <laughs> really now, bad gin. Now, listen to what you also had. In, in that time, what else did you want? You wanted bourbon. You know how you made bourbon? You took neutral spirit, and you put dead rats or rotting meat in it for a few days. And that added a Shut flavor. The hell what? I'm serious. It added that kind of sweet, rotty smell that comes that makes bourbon. <laughs> this does not sound like. Do you guys see why I don't like bourbon? Eating. Exactly. See? And, then, and for scotch, they, they took the, the neutral spirit and they put creosote in it. You know the stuff that coats telephone yeah, lines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. creosote. And so that is why cocktails became very important in Prohibition, because you had to cover all that nasty liquor flavor. Who wants a dead rat cocktail? <laughs> Who wants a dead rat cocktail, exactly. So so you add lots of sweeteners and lots of things that made it easier to drink, make it a faster oh. drink, because it could be rated any second. So so that's where cocktails kind of blew up in the U.S., the sweeter cocktails. Um, all right, so a couple things. What, have we got questions? No, I, w I was going to, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss a comment for okay. later. 
Yeah, I want to call um, it. So then those kind of pr proceeded through the war era until the 1960s and 70s. Well, what was the inebriation of choice in the 60s and 70s? Um, beer? I, LSD? I, Pot, <laughs> LSD. Oh, I, oh, I was thinking tea. liquid. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously so, LSD. So that's the thing. So <laughs> cocktails fell out because people were doing pot and LSD and all these kind of things. They, they became more popular. So the cocktail culture kind of collapsed in the 60s and 70s. But then it roared back in the 80s. Remember the movie Cocktail? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. But those were, Finnegan's Raw. Those were vodka drinks. So vodka sure. cocktails, <laughs> the Cosmopolitan. You know, Zima, which isn't a cocktail, but it's kind of like that. Who knows about um, those Zimas? It, it, so that, that era is, became really popular with cocktails, but the vodka cocktails. But then luckily in the 2000s, whiskey's back. And so that's when whiskey cocktails became popular. That's when craft distilleries started producing cocktails. So there, this, the, how it rotates is really interesting to see how it... A lot of it's cultural. cultural. It's, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's cultural. It's, it's what, what's available. Okay. I mean, so when are they going to start making cocktails with these new gummy edibles? I mean, hey, they can, we can blend both of these worlds together. That's true. I bet you it's already started in places like Colorado. That probably I mean. is true. Well, can you uh, imagine? I'll take a, a, a gummy cocktail uh, with extra cream. I mean, what are you going to do? Gummy Roy. <laughs> gummy, Roy. gummy Royale. <laughs> when you think about the history of cocktails, though, I mean, you're, you're talking about, you know, literary figures that, you know, influence those drinks. You're talking about movies. Yeah. Like James Bond. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? Shaken, not stirred. Right. Whatever, man. <laughs> so yeah. there was a, we've got a new viewer that I wanted to call out. Ron Weasley, the screen name. Um, Ron, thanks for joining. Glad you're here. Uh, kind of, I guess, intrigued and honored that we're part of the, your journey. Yeah. I uh, hope we're not getting you in trouble with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I understand. I completely relate. But uh, welcome to the show. So uh, wanted to call you out. But getting back to these this, these cocktails and, and the history of them, yep. the stories that come along so you can hear how things come about, right? So you said, what was the original name of an old? A bittered old, sling. So a the, bittered a, sling. A lot, lot of the, the cocktails were slings. And, and see, that's the thing. The, the terms have changed. You know, you used to have highballs. You don't have a highball anymore. But a highball is, def, is, is technically spirit and one mixer. So uh, Tom was showing talking about earlier, he had a scotch and soda. That's a mix. That's a highball, because it's Scotch spirit and one and mixer. One mix, which so is soda. Like soda or fruit juice or something like that. Yep. Um, then you have duos that are that would be a spirit and a liqueur, like a, um, like a grasshopper or something like that, where you have cream de mint or something sure, sure. To, to do it. So and there's triple tri trios and things like that. So my parents, when I was a kid in the 70s, 80s, had all these different drink glasses. They had the highballs. They had the um, tumblers. They had all these kind of things that. that we that I don't see used anymore in whiskey. You used to have a, a rocks glass, a wine Nor glass. Normally, so if I'm if I'm shopping for a restaurant, yes. and I've got to buy glassware, you're generally buying some sort of beer glass. Mm -hmm. Sure. If you're a beer restaurant, you might have sure. two or three, three different it. kinds of beer glasses, but generally you're getting a pint glass. You're getting an old fashioned glass, rocks glass, yep. um, a Collins glass which is generally a little bit bigger than this, so that'd be your tall. Um, and then maybe a couple of different wine glasses, depending on your, yeah. your restaurant. But, I mean, you don't have uh, martini glasses. Yeah. Uh, but, martinis. I mean, you don't see a whole lot of... Because I, I can remember when mm -hmm. I first started in restaurants, like, you'd walk into a bar and there'd be, like, all of this glass. Yeah, brandy like, sniffers and shit. Cherry this, glasses. Man. And, yeah. yeah, and, uh, you know, it just all kind of fell out of favor. I mean, nobody... Nobody really uses that stuff much anymore, which is kind of interesting, actually, because there was some really cool, like, vintage old glassware, and they all had a, a purpose. I mean, right. if you go, like, wine glass shopping, there's a ridiculous amount of wine yeah, glasses. Yeah, you got champagne flutes and champagne, champagne. Right. Bowls. Depending on, like, well, them? depending on, like, the age of the wines yeah. and the grape variety, and, and it's the same with all the cocktails. I mean, it was made... Uh, to kind of you know accentuate that cocktail, either make it look cool yeah. or make it taste a little better. So, well, I can tell you from my own experience, I just bought some new uh, two a pair of new Scotch glasses just for fun because I've been interested in oh, yeah. you know, those onion shaped bulbous yep. glasses. That was kind of cool. Long stang, big bulb on it, and a very small opening. And I can tell you, probably the best glass I've ever nosed a whiskey out of. 
it's amazing that the, the bulb is very big and so it, there's a lot of, of air in there that, that it, it opens up but it all focuses onto this one small opening and I mean it's just there's it's, lots of surf, glass surface area it's to come. wonderful kind of hard to drink out I was going to ask you you're like that. you kind of really <laughs> have to tip get it up, there, up right? but I mean and pour it, it into a different glass yeah <laughs> if you enjoy nosing a whiskey like I do uh, it's it's the best so glass you can is, get out is there. it the best you think I, man it's amazing it just is focuses it all right there Sean is this your simple syrup yeah this does need a little more sweetness you're right. Uh, this so, one's diluted out, but yeah, I mean, look, we all like our Big Ten, right? So it's not like it was a bad yeah, drink. No, 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 <laughs> that's fine. No, but, that, that's why I think an old-fashioned may be better with the, with this because it it adds sugar directly to it, a simple syrup, and, and this probably could use a little more bitters too, in, in hindsight. But ooh, Tom but, wants a show and, about glassware. Interesting. We can. Oh, wow. I, I will yeah. say that you know cocktails are funny because depending on what what liquor you use, you might have to go back and kind of tweak things yep. a little bit. Um, the Ardbeg was a little overpowering, so a little oh, more sweet. It's not bad, though. <laughs> no, I'm not saying but bad. It's, but it's not a balanced cocktail. That's you know it. what I mean? That's and and that's so cool. that's that's the thing. So you you have to adjust your recipe based on what you're using. Yeah, a, a, a whiskey or, you know, somebody who is, is really into the craft whiskey, they say that's not right. It's not That recipe isn't right for that whiskey. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That definitely tamed the art bag down on the palate. It's still there on the nose, which is kind of fun. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a peated whiskey. You kind of you expect it. You want that, but mm. that sweetened it down a lot. Yeah. Bit, where the art bag is definitely not. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. that's much better. So I mean, you just kind of have to play around with it, see what you come up with. Yep. <laughs> well, well, thanks, right. Doctor Scotch. We right. appreciate yeah, it. Man, right, that was cool. Good. There's a old oh, fall, fall fashion, whatever you call that thing. <laughs> so we, we, got go. we've uh, we've covered a couple of mixed drinks. We we, we had one that we weren't able to, to do, um, and that sucks because I kind of was interested in it. Um, not to say we can't come back to it, but you got the recipe, mm -hmm. and we'll be putting the recipes out on the website. So somebody else try it. I mean, it's fun. It's if you, if you if you're a mixologist and you like to just experiment, you can come up with some really cool yeah. stuff. And I mean, you know, a lot of cocktails are just variations on one drink. Right. You know what I mean? So you're you're changing up the simple syrup, and you're you're adding a couple of ingredients to that, or you're, you know, changing up the the whiskey, and and it's adding an element of smoke or or yep. malt or something like that. So I mean, you're you're really just kind of messing around with things. So. Well, we we do have a couple of um, Scotch in the News uh, articles, and I wanted to bring up this one uh, first. This one is uh, a little near and dear. Uh, we would probably agree. Of course, there's a friggin' article uh, advertisement in there. But the world's <laughs> best Scotch whiskey, according to the 2020 New York International Spirits Competition, is drum roll, please. Celebrate from anywhere. Another damn advertisement. No, Signet. Go figure. Go figure. Go so Glenn Moe um, Signet. Glenn Moe Signet, and uh, I'm excited for him because it is. It's, it's a damn it's good, good bottle. Too. I mean, it's an NAS. It's, it's a little salty on the price tag. But it's a very interesting whiskey. Very interesting. It, it's different because they actually. Um, they have chocolate so, malt. Yeah, it's a chocolate malt. And, and so it, it, it brings a different flavor to it. Really cool. I'm excited for him. Uh, I'm happy and excited for our friend. Uh, uh, Dan uh, Kroll that uh, works for Glen Moe. I'm, I'm excited to see that. And I wanted to, to shout that out and, and make sure everybody knew that. We could use a bottle of that. We reviewed it a long time ago. Yep. Haven't had any since. That'd, but, be, that'd be fun to do again. Um, yeah. The second article that I found, I had oh seen this gosh. earlier. Uh, I, before I found this article, I actually went looking for an article on this it. This is but, pretty cool. So um, all of you are familiar with the Kingsman movies. Uh, there's a new one coming out. It's supposed to be out this year. been delayed. It's actually called The King's Man, and it's a prequel to the other Kingsmans. Well, and the other, like the first one, they had a Dalmore 1962 or yeah. 69 or something. Yeah. Like that. But this one, they actually, the director of the movie worked with uh, uh, the master blender, uh, Rachel Berry from Glendronic, and they picked a 29 year old Glendronic, okay? Oh, and man. it's called The Kingsman. Uh, anyway, what's cool about this, and it's gone on sale, I, it's about. 1400 bucks US, I think about 1200 pounds. Uh, I, I don't know. I thought I'm, it was 600 pounds. I thought no. it went up already. No, it's not going up already. I actually found one website in the US that sells it, that has it 
for sale, but it's out of stock. I mean, it can't be out of stock because they haven't gotten no, it. They, so they probably place, are listing it yeah, but they're prior to, trying to, to, to place holder. Sell it. But interesting story about this that I want to cover, and if, if I happen to get my hands on some of this, I'll talk about it in depth more. But they picked this, was, uh, uh, Barry, Dr. Barry picked this bottle this year, this cask, because uh, six she wanted to give, six casks, she wanted to give homage the, uh, to the year, 29 year old. Back before World War I, three good friends that are all going off to the front line bought a 29 year old bottle of Glendronic. Each of them bought a bottle and they had they basically made a vow, look, when we come home from this, we're gonna crack this open, we're, we're drinking our whiskey. Two of them never made it back. The one that did make it back didn't feel right to open the bottle donated it to the distillery and it's oh, wow. the oldest bottle of this of the still are you kidding me it, that they have on display at the, that the distillery it's only 29 years old as far as right. aging but this is pre-world war one sure well, and it's still one? yes oh world my war gosh. one and so it's kind of got a really cool story and that's why she wanted to pick a 29 year old bottle uh, or neat. you know whiskey yeah. cool stuff i don't know who's <clears> going to be able to float the bill to grab one maybe say scotch MSRP for dummies this, goes to the boats and we get lucky or in this uh <laughs> You never know, right? You never know. Does it talk but about the price in this article? It doesn't talk about the price. No, Show the bottle. Scroll up a little bit more. I mean, you can't see it. Yeah, it oh, yes. it uh, it looks exquisite, you guys. It looks absolutely delicious. I mean, let's be honest. I see you're not going to be disappointed, but it's a hefty price tag. That's so, nice. wanted to to, to point that That's one cool. out. So, the, the last uh, topic I wanted to talk about is this Diageo Prima and Alta. Ultima luxury scotch whiskey. We talked about this ah, months ago. You know when they announced yeah. it. it. It's a it's a collection. There are two hundred and thirty two or two hundred thirty eight sets of this collection. Oh, that's that's easy. So two hundred and thirty eight of this collection of ten bottles, and these ten bottles are well. You get ten bottles. Okay. Look at all those guys. Yeah. You oh, get ten bottles for that price. Eight, right. Right. Eight bottles. Right. Oh, oh, is it eight? Yeah. Rilling. Yeah, it's eight. I said ten. Well, that's, Scroll that's down. only like fifteen thousand dollars. So anyway, it, you know. here's the, the crazy. This guy in this article on Forbes actually scored each bottle. He had he what? was able to sample them. Okay, so I was like, all right, here's his scoring scoring system: zero to four, avoid the bottle; five to five point five, barely passable; six to six point five, decent enough, not really for me, but you you might like it; seven to seven five, good; eight to eight five, extremely good; nine to ten, absolutely super, superb. So when I scroll down, I'm like, all right, the Colilo 35 was, it scored a what? It scored an 8.5, pretty good. The Klein Leach 26 scored an 8. The Cragmore 48 scored a 10. What? <laughs> Boom. I mean, knocks it out of the park. The Lagavulin 28. One of the best whiskeys he's ever tried. <laughs> and right. the first in his reviews to ever get a 10. Exactly. <laughs> the Mortlock 25, keep on going. What, it's, it's, yeah, 8. Yeah, the, the, oh, the, the, got a six. six. Oh, no. right? and it's like, sulfur. Sulfur's too much. Right, right. sulfur too much. I'm, I'm going, wow. 40 year old Port Ellen. The 40 year old oh. Port Ellen nab, nabs a nine. And then the 30 year old Singleton only a seven five. Wow. Um, but the Talisker 31 pulled out an eight five. So interesting. It's, it's So here's the, what I want to talk about this, you guys. So this is actually out there. There's one more article on this story uh, if you go to the email. This, this lineup, it's actually at Sotheby's right now. The auction is open. It's the first set to actually hit the market. They put it to Sotheby's. Uh, the auction is open right now. It is um, <laughs> starting bid at 14,000 pounds. The lot closes September 1st. There are zero bids, and the reserve has not been met. Oh. <laughs> That's not open yet, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the lot closed September. Yeah. Right, it's, it's, it's open. <laughs> Nobody's bidding for it. And if they are, it's not enough money. That's right. a chunk so, of change. What's the reserve? They're, they're saying it's probably estimated at twenty-eight. What's yeah. the owner of the reserve? Oh, was, this was the one that had the the eight smaller bottles. No, oh, yeah. It, it yeah. gave you the two centiliter bottles so you could try the whiskeys. Right, every one of the sets had opening that. Your, opening bottle. Yeah. Oh, so you, can, so you get eight full uh, 70, 70 centiliter and. Eight, uh, eight, eight two. two so right. you can you can have a dram. Nice. So Which think. is after you've spent yeah, anywhere you from sixteen thousand to twenty eight thousand pounds. For but sure. Um, some of the whiskey sound absolutely amazing. Some you know you're thinking, wow, I spent sixteen thousand pounds and this is what I got. But as a collection, I can see how it's worth something. But it's out there, you go. So we we touched about it six months ago. If you're if you were intrigued, then get your wallet out now. You know maybe they accept PayPal. Oh, I don't pour, know. Pour some of that Port Ellen in my hand for a quarter. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, that's scotching the news. It's just some, a, a couple of fun things and, and a shout out to you know to Glenn Mo. 
um, to talk about Glenn Dro and uh, some of these interesting it's auctions. Fun, man. Yeah. You know, I haven't talked. To, I haven't heard you talk about auctions in a long time. I, way back three, four years ago, uh, you really were, were. I'll tell you what, man. I, I'm in auctions, but it's not for whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I remember the day. I'm, where I'm doing some other stuff right now. But every night we'd come uh, over. So I was like, look at oh, these yeah. bottles. But, yeah, like, but you know what? For a while. <laughs> auctions aren't really going on right now. No, they're not. I mean, uh, there's you know, not much anything. And if you're buying whiskey from out of the country, if you're getting scotch, uh, they're tacking on that tariff, man. <laughs> so, so if you get that, if you pay twenty thousand pounds, they can put a twenty five percent tariff on that. Yep. It's all single malt. Yep. Oof. Thank and you. it's coming from Sotheby's in London, yes. But I'll tell you what, I've bought several bottles of whiskey from the Netherlands uh, in the last three or four months, and Shh. don't, you don't tell them that because they're going to call your name and say, "Hey, uh, we understand that you have." More than four dollars worth of it wasn't. It wasn't out. whiskey. It was. Syrup. It was uh, syrup. It was glassware. Glassware. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. um, cool. So we, we did some cool <laughs> mixed drinks tonight, and yeah. that was fun. It so was. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed that I totally. Uh, yeah, we'll but, get we'll get the apple juice next time because yeah. I haven't made cinnamon simple syrup. I'm all excited about. Although that. the sour was delicious. The sour is. Yeah, I, I like sours, man. They're fun. Yeah, so, you know, experiment, look up recipes online, all yeah. the ones that, if it it's starts totally. with a weird ingredient or has something you've never heard of before, throw that away. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not three, trying to fill up on a bunch of weird stuff. Three or four ingredients, and that's pretty much all you need. Well, and, I mean, I, I'm amazed at the times that I open up, like, even stuff from, like, normal, like, Forbes or, you know, wherever, that they're like, 10 great cocktails for the summer. And I'm like, I work in restaurants. I don't know what that is. Or that, or right. that. But I don't even know where to, to know buy it, it, you know? And yep. so I'm sure if you lived in, you know, like New York or L.A., you could probably go to a specialty market that would have a lot of that stuff. But for everybody else, you're out of luck. You know, yeah. the, so we're talking a couple years ago. I went up to Seattle um, for work, and there was a, an SMWS partner bar there, right? So I was a new member, and I'm like, I'm fine in this place. I don't care got how far I got my card. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm like, I get it. I, I have to wait outside because the bar has too many people in. So finally, when some people come out, I go in. I'm super stoked. Place is packed. Bunch of younger folk, right? Happening. But I see all these SMW. Actually, their SMWS bottles were in a cage in the bathroom. That's where they were. In the bathroom? Yes. And I even took a picture, and I emailed it to the SMWS guy, the guy that was Ben Dietrich before Ben. I'm like, this is pretty sad. You guys are partners. It's where they're putting your liquor. But anyway, this, this place had over 4,000 miles of whiskey. Their, their whiskey was on an iPad, the menu. You, they literally hand you an iPad, and you would scroll through or search for what you were looking for. Awesome selections. That bartender didn't want to talk to me because I wanted a straight whiskey. Now, if I wanted to freaking get one of those $35 drams and put it in a mixed drink cocktail, she'd sit there and talk to me all night. Well, here's, I'm going to put this elderflower. Really? And, and it was crazy. I'm like, what makes you think I'm going to pay this 60 bucks me. for that dram <laughs> and have you pour it on that lime juice? No, I, no. I don't even want you to pour it. I know. <laughs> just give me the bottle and a glass and walk away. Uh, it's, it, I was so disappointed and, and just walked out of there going, man, I because I, I was so excited about going and to find out that this particular bar was all about making cocktails with high-end scotch as opposed to serving the high-end scotch and, and appreciating for what it was. But That's too bad. Maybe I'm the old guy. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> yes, we had some technical difficulties in the more in the beginning, uh, but we also had some new toys. Drew was having fun with his new camera. Yeah, I think we're going to get some more stuff for that. Um, yeah. I hope everybody liked the Molly intro. I know she enjoyed it. I'm sure she's going to be coming running up here in a few seconds looking for a pet pretzel or so. But uh, I did get her some pretzels. You did? Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> are we going to close so, out with Molly again? Maybe we close out with Molly. We're going to close out with Molly and get to the pretzels. Hey, up. everybody, thank you for joining us on Thursday night, man. So I hope much fun. You guys had a good time. So we had fun. Cheers, so guys. We'll you. see you guys in the Patreon after party. Ooh, let's go. <laughs>